Hi everyone, welcome to my presentation on how to create an Advent Calendar Power App. I'm Keith Atherton and I've been a software developer for over 20 years. I've worked for various companies and sectors in the UK and US, but currently I work as a senior software developer for an IT consultancy in Edinburgh called Quorum. My contact details are on screen if you wish to contact me directly after this talk with any questions. Also, there are only a few slides for this presentation. Most of it will be a demo. Feel free to follow along. Now, I will be covering a lot, so if it's too fast, feel free to pause the video while you follow along. The finished Power App will be available as a package on my GitHub page, and I'll include the link at the end of the session. Okay, let's get started. So what we're looking at here is going to be the finished result or something close to that. This is going to be an Advent Calendar Power App. We can see we've got this kind of grid view going on with all the windows. So they go up to one, two, three, all the way up to 24. So these are the days of December in a typical Advent Calendar. The way this will work is that when we click on one of the windows, we'll actually be taken to another page, almost like we've opened the window, it will say, happy 1st of December or whatever the date may be. And we're going to have a different picture in the background of each of the windows. And when we've done, we can click on the back button and return back to this main screen with all the windows. Another feature that we'll include is that if we click on a date that we've not yet reached yet, let's say the 24th of December, when we click on there, it's going to detect that we're not yet at that date and give us this message here. It's not yet 24th of December or again, whatever the date may be. And it's just going to give us this, this stop icon. It won't actually show us the picture. And again, we can click on back and return to this main screen. OK, so we started with a brand new Canvas Power App project. So for those of you new to Power Apps, there's two types. There's a Canvas Power App, which is what we'll use today. And this is where you start with a blank canvas and you've got full control over the user interface. There's also another type called a model driven Power App, but we won't cover that today. So this is the Power App Studio that we're looking at right now. And as you can see, we run this in the browser. Today we're using Chrome and this is what we'll use to create the Power App. So the main rectangle, this white rectangle we can see right here, this is the app. This is where we'll place controls and this will be the app itself. On the left hand side, we've got things like a tree view where we can see the app component. This is screen one, which is visible right now. We can add more screens and we will later on. And we've got other things as well, like components. We've got the ribbon view with kind of common features here. Uh, things like being able to insert these different components adding data, creating new screens if we wish as well. If we go on the left hand side, we've got a menu option right here. We'll expand this. We can see the tree view. We can jump to things like insert, just like we did from the ribbon, um, add data connections, upload media, things like images, videos, things like this. And when we have something in the tree view selected right here on the left, on the right hand side, we've actually got the properties. So in this case, screen one is selected. We've got properties, things like fill, where we can set color, the background image, image position. We've got several different options here. So obviously the options will change depending on what's selected on the left. If we go to advanced, we've got several more options available as well. Now, one thing to note as well, this right here, this is actually the formula bar. So this is where we can use the code that Power Apps use, which is called Power FX. And right here, we've got a property fill. We can choose any of these others as well. And then the right hand side, in this case, fill is a color, which is white. But right here, we can actually set different things. We can actually use pieces of code if we wish. Or we can just set actual literal values as well. So this is the Power FX formula bar. So the first thing we need to do is to give our Power App some data to work with. So we mentioned before, we're looking at an advent calendar. This is going to go from days one to 24. And for each of those days, we actually want an image as well. So to save us some time, I've actually already pre-prepared some code uh, that we'll use. 
And so what I'm going to do is go to the app component, go to advanced. And when the app starts, it will actually call this event right here, app on start. And so for the formula bar, I'm just going to expand this. So we've got a bigger view of the code and I'm going to paste the code in there. So what we've got right here in the code is clear collect. I won't go through all of the code, but this will actually just build up a collection. We're going to call the collection call windows as in collection of windows. And then this JSON style syntax that you can see right here, each one of those is a record which is comma separated. So this record right here, we've got a field called day with a value one and a field called image URL, which has got this value right here. So as you can see, this just repeats day two, day three, and we have different image URLs for each one. And if we go all the way down, we go to day 24. So I'll preview some of these image URLs. If I go ahead and click on this, this is gonna be for day one. We're going to show this image. Day two has this image and so on and so on. I'll go ahead and close those. Now I'm just going to minimize this a, a little bit. Now a cool feature with this uh, editor right here is if you select one of the variables, so call windows, the one that's going to be built up with these records right here. If we drop this down right here, we can actually preview any data if it has some. Now in this case, we didn't find any data because this code has not yet run. So it's not actually populated it with these records. So in order to do that, we need to mimic the applications on start event. Now the way we're gonna do that is actually go to this app component and we have a handy shortcut right here, run on start. That runs and if I select call windows again, we can actually see it's populated with the data. So one all the way down to 24. We can see we've got the day field right there and the image URL field right here as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that and expand this code so we can see more. Okay, now that we've got the code, we actually want the control to give us this grid style view of the windows one, two, three, all the way up to 24. So the way we're going to do that is going to go back to the screen. We're going to insert, layout, and we're going to use a vertical gallery. Now, what this does is this repeats records from a data source, but we can actually change the format of how it looks. It's not just like a fixed table or a fixed list view or a list box. This is something where we can actually change. We can use text, images, buttons, and you can see it repeats it throughout. So when we've inserted this control, we've actually started off with some sample data. Um, but what we're going to do is under select a data source is choose this collection of windows, this coal windows. So I go ahead and select that. We can see we've now got some there's something showing in there. We've got the image URLs by the looks of it showing, but we actually going to change how this looks. So what we can do is go to layout on the right hand side in the properties, choose something a bit more basic like title. And now we've re removed the image, one of the text labels, we've got something a bit more straightforward. So first thing we want to do is choose this text label. And we don't want the image URL showing. We really want the day showing ideally. So I'm going to go to advanced under text image URL. I will change that today. So now we can see the days repeated one, two, three, and so on and so on. Other things we don't need. We don't need this uh, right arrow button. I'm going to go ahead and just delete that. The separator there, which just gives us this underline. We don't need that either. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this. And one other thing I want to do is then snap this to the very top left of the screen. And then I'm going to just maximize this to fill the entire screen itself. And now we can see we've actually got them all showing there. But clearly there's a problem. This is only one column. And what we really want is a grid style view where we've got six columns by four rows. And that will give us the 24 days for the advent calendar. So one thing we can do here is when we've got the gallery selected, go to the properties and we can actually decide how many wrap. 
So I'm going to change this rep count to the amount of columns that I want, which is six. Go ahead and do that. And then we can see now we've got six evenly spaced columns that go all the way across the full width of the screen. However, another problem, we can see that the rows, we're only filling half the screen here. This row height is not what we need it to be, even though the gallery is filling the screen. So this is actually controlled by the template size, which we can see right here. So if I go ahead and select, select the template size, we can see we've got some code as a starting point that's been provided for us. This is some of that power effects that I mentioned. Now, what I'm going to do is actually going to just change this value to something where it's a quarter of the screen's height. That way it will evenly space the rows. So I'm going to go ahead and select this. I'm going to choose parent, which is going to be the screen one in this case. I'm going to choose the height divided by four. And we can now see that we've got four rows and they fill the screen quite well. Now, the next thing that we want to do is change the look and feel of these cells as they get repeated across. So what I'm going to do is select this very top left one, and this is almost like the template cell. Any changes, as we saw before, that I make to this one get reflected in all of the other cells. So if I go just here, I'm actually going to choose this text control. I'm just going to expand this to fill the cell. And again, we can see this repeated throughout when I make the changes. And I want that text there actually centered. So I'm going to go ahead to text alignment, change that to center. And if also it's showing at the top, I really want this in the center. If I scroll down, I've got vertical align, so I can actually change that to middle as well. And there we go. So now we've got everything laid out all of the 24 windows as expected. Okay, the next thing we want to do is upload a background image like we saw in the example there. So to do that, we'll go to background image, upload. Then we can choose uh, an image that we want. So I'll go ahead, I've downloaded one already, which is this one right here. Now we can see there's a few problems already. This is a bit big and overpowering. It's really just kind of losing all the numbers. We, we can't see a thing. So one thing we want to do is just kind of fade that into the background a bit more. So there's a few options here. You can either start with an image that is already a bit more subtle, a bit more desaturated than this one. Uh, one thing I'll do is a bit of a hack. I'm actually going to place a rectangle over the top of this image. I'm going to give it some kind of translucency. So it's just going to fade the image out a bit and let the numbers in the front in the gallery pop out just a bit more. OK, so the way I'm going to do that is select on screen. I'm going to go to insert. Now here, there's a few options. We can go to rectangle right here, which I'll do. Another thing as well, just to show there's a search feature there. So if it was something buried in the in the tree there and you wasn't quite sure where it was, you can use that. But I'm going to go ahead and use rectangle. I'm actually just going to put this to fill the entire screen. Now I actually need this behind the gallery because at the moment it's over the top. So I'm going to right click I'm going to send that to the back. I'm going to go over to here and go to color. I'll choose white. But again, I want to change the opacity of this. So I'm going to go ahead and go to custom. And on this alpha channel right here, we can type or we can just use this slider right here. So you can see as I'm just moving it around, I'll actually leave it somewhere around there. I think that looks OK. OK, what we'll do now is in each of those windows, I'll just place a bit of a border around them so it just separates them. So if I go ahead and select on this, select the cell right there, click on this and we do have a border option right here. So I'm just going to change this value, change it to one. Let's see how that looks. That's OK. It's a little heavy. Uh, let's go to this border. We'll just change the color. Let's change it to a gray. There we go. So that seems a bit better. So we can see that when we hit play, we're kind of boxed in each window, one to 24. It's quite clear where the clickable section is. 
OK. So the next step that we need to do is that when we click on one of these windows, we're going to go to a new screen. The new screen will contain an image and a message that will just be for that particular day of December. And there'll be a back button when we can return to this main screen right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here. We're going to create a new screen for this. We do get some options, but I'm going to go with blank. I'm actually going to call this. Let's give this a decent name. So we'll call this open window screen. And I should really name this first one just there as well. So I'll just call this calendar screen. Now, the useful thing with giving the screens names is that something that screen readers read out. So it's a good thing for accessibility and just for good practice is if it's an actual, uh, you know, understandable name rather than SCN1234 or something code like. So this is a good practice to go down. Now that we're on, we've created this new screen, we get started with this blank canvas that we saw the, the main screen have in the first place. So what I want to do here is add a few things. Again, we want an image that's going to fill the screen. So we're going to go ahead and go to insert. We're going to search for image and place this here. Again, we're going to snap this to fill the entire screen. Another thing that I want to insert onto the screen is going to be a text label. This will be the message at the bottom of the screen. I'm going to place this right here. Um, I'm going to center the text. Um, let's see if we can just increase the font of this. Let's try 50. We can change the weight as well. Let's try semi bold. How does that look? OK, that's looking all right. And we want to include a back button in the top right hand corner just up here as well. So if I go to insert, let's try back. OK, we've got a couple of options. I'm going to go with back arrow. I'm going to place this right about here. OK, so now we've got this when we click on the back button. So on select, which is the clicking of the button, there's a function we can use just called back, which will return to the previous screen. Now we have an image right here and some text. These will be replaced. This screen will be like a reusable template. And no matter which day on the calendar we click on, which window, it will actually swap out the assets. It will swap out the image and the text on this screen for that particular day based on the records in that call windows, that collection of windows that we first created. OK, so what we need to do is we need to go back to the main calendar screen. Go to this template cell right here. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to put some code in there so that when this is clicked on, we're actually going to go to this open window screen. So again, just to save us some time, I've actually uh, prepared some code ahead of time. So if I go to advanced on this text label right here, and if we go to on select, I'll expand this view. I'll insert some code right here. This is not quite finished. So let me just comment something out there. So we won't go into too much detail with the code, but just to explain what really happens here is that when this text label is clicked in the gallery, we're going to get some variables from that particular item, no matter which window is collected. And that's what these set functions are doing. They're going to set a new variable, which is GBL global image URL to this item in the gallery. And then the field on it is the image URL. So the same thing's going to happen for day. We're just going to set a variable to hold the day. There's a bit of code here to deal with the ordinals. So one would be first, two would be second. And this is just for a display message that we'll use later on. Again, we won't go into too much detail, but this is hopefully fairly readable with setting of a variable. This is an if statement. This some ends with functions. So there's, you know, this is all part of the power FX language. Very powerful. So I'm going to scroll down. We're going to have a check here. So this is check if this window is for today or before. So again, we only want to allow today and previous. 
So the way this is working is we're going to set a variable right here to a date, which is going to be this year, 12th, which is December, and then the day. The day will be inserted right here. So if we click on one, it'll be 1st December 2022. If we click on 19, it will be 19th of December 2022. So typically what we'd want in the code, and this, this green line here is commented out, is we want to say, is this window, is uh, open window allowed? And this will say, okay, we're going to check the window date. Let's say one has been clicked. Is that less than or equal to today? Now, because today is the 1st of December, but we want to test a few more windows, we're actually just going to fake this. We're going to pretend we're on the 8th of December. So with that bearing in mind, when we come to test it, we want to be able to open all of the windows, one up to eight, because it thinks today is the 8th. Anything past that, we should get blocked. It should be a screen that we're not allowed to open the window for. And then right here, we have an if statement. So if is open window allowed, what we will do is navigate to uh, the open window screen, the one we just created there. We're actually going to set a variable here for the message. And we're actually going to navigate to that screen as well. So the else for this as well, I should say as well, there's going to be a new warning screen that we'll create. And this is going to be a similar looking screen. And it's actually just going to have a different message saying it's not this date of December yet. Um, and we're going to navigate to that screen after we've created it. OK, so now we set these variables. We've got the image URL and the message. And these are going to be the two things that we want to replace on the template screen. So the first thing I'll do is grab this variable right here, global message, go to the open window screen, I actually want this piece of text to change. So where we have text, instead of a fake, a uh, fixed piece of dummy text, I actually want it to change to be that variable, which we've not yet set, we've not run the code. If I go back to the calendar screen, again on this, this click that happens right here. So when this gets selected, we actually set the image URL. And again, if I go back to this open window screen, I want this image right here to show whatever variable is there. So at the moment we have image, which is set to this sample image, which is the thing we see right here. I'm going to change this to a variable. So now we've done those, what I'm going to do is going to go ahead and preview this. I'm going to go ahead and click on window one. And there we go. It goes to the open window screen. It's changed the message. Happy 1st of December. And what it's done right here is put the image in the background that we expect as well. And if we click on the back button, it returns us back to the main screen. So again, if we click on another one of these, let's click on three. There we go. So it swapped out the text at the bottom. Happy 3rd of December. It's changed the image as we expected, although we could see there was a slight delay. Now, the reason for the delay there is that we're using uh, an image URL. So it's actually when we've called the image URL, it's had to download the image first and then display it. If you'd uploaded images direct to the Power Apps into the media library, these would be a lot snappier. They would just be ready to use straight away. OK, so there's just a couple of things I want to change here. If I just go back again, um, we can see if I go to one, I can see the message here. If there's a bit of darkness on the image, it kind of obscures the text a bit. And when I go on three, I could see again the, the coloring, just the contrast isn't great. So I'm just going to go ahead and just tweak a couple of things here. So I'll exit the preview, choose the back button. I'm going to go ahead for changing that color. Let me change that to white. So for most backgrounds, that should pop a bit better. Um, okay, let's see. One other thing I'd like to change is this text right here as well. Again, I just want a bit more contrast so it's easy to read on darker backgrounds. So I'm going to go ahead and make a change right here. Okay, so if I change this background to white, that's a little harsh. Let me go to custom. Let's do the transparency again, the opacity rather. Great. So if I lower that alpha channel, I think that just pops a bit better. I think that looks okay. So again, if I preview this and choose one, 
that's all looking okay. And if I go back and go to three, that's looking okay too. So yep, I think everything is looking fine just there. So let's go back to the main screen. Right, now that we've got the main screen and the open window screen, we want a warning screen, the one that's going to tell us you're not at this day in December yet. We don't want it to open. So what we're going to do is go to this open window screen. We're going to want something similar to this. We're going to want some image, which is just going to be like a stop sign or something like this. Uh, the message at the very bottom just there and then a back button to return to the main window screen. So because it's similar enough to this one as a good starting point, what we're going to do is just duplicate this screen just to save us some time. So if we go ahead here, we're going to go to duplicate screen. There we go. So we've got a, co a copy of that right there. I'm going to go ahead and just rename this to give it a better name. So we'll call that warning screen. Now, what we want to do is we'll actually use the same variable to set this message, but we don't want this image in the background. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. I'm going to go ahead and insert something new. Let's see if, okay, blocked. Let's insert this icon called blocked. Just make this a little bigger. Okay, that's, we can see it's centering there, but we've also got options for alignment just here as well. So we could also, uh, Align that to the center right there. Align it to the middle if we wish as well. I'm going to change the color of that. I'm just going to make it uh, red so it pops a bit more. And on the left hand side, we could see that I do have the arrow for the back button just there. Uh, but because I use the white font, that's hidden away just now. So I'm going to go ahead and change the color of that. Let's change it to black. There we go. So, so far, so good. So if we go back to the calendar screen and on the gallery, I'm going to click on here, which is really this text label on this cell. If I go back to the select event, there's one piece of code I need to change. And that's this one just here. So if opening the window is allowed, everything's working fine. If it's not, we need to navigate to this warning screen right here. Okay. So we're ready to give this a test. Let's go ahead and preview the app. We'll go ahead and click on one, which we expect to open the window, which it does. We can go back. Let's try five. Five should be okay as well. So again, takes a moment to load the image, but we've got the image and we've got the appropriate message. And if we click back again, now again, we're mimicking that we're on the 8th of December here. So if we click on eight, we should be absolutely fine. And there we go. We have a nice, lovely image right there. And if we go back and then choose the ninth, we'd expect to be blocked because that's not currently today or before. So let's click on that. And there we go. We get the block screen. So it's not yet 9th of December. It's changed the message. This icon will always be the same. And we can click on the back button to return us to this main screen right here. So. There you have it. We now have a working advent calendar power app. So we've reached the end. If you've made it this far, thank you for your time. If you've enjoyed it, feel free to like it and share on social media using hashtag Festive Tech Calendar 2022. I'd like to thank the Festive Tech Calendar organizers this year, who are Gregor Sutty, Richard Hooper, Simon Lee, Lisa Hoving, and me too. Please do check out the other great sessions at festivetechcalendar.com. Also, Festive Tech Calendar is raising money for Missing People, a UK charity dedicated to reconnecting missing people and their loved ones. I've had the opportunity to meet some of the amazing folk who work at Missing People and can tell you that they do fantastic and very important work. If you wish, you can donate money using the link shown here. Every donation helps. Again, if you want to reach out to me, my contact details are on screen. I hope you and your loved ones have a happy and healthy festive season. Bye for now.